So good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the Basic Chemical Pathology Practice Questions Part 4. I'm Dr. Ia Ezebasi, and I'll be taking you through this part. Um, this will deal with um, a little bit of intoxication and a lot of acid-base balance. So it's technical, but it's going to be very interesting and hot. Hope. You will stay with us through it all. Please, before we go forward, I'd like to ask you to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video to other people who would benefit from it. It's a free resource. Help us to keep giving you this wonderful service. Thank you so much. So question number one. Which electrolyte is primarily found in cells and plays a key role in muscle and nerve function? That's so easy. It's potassium. Question number two, which electrolyte imbalance is seen in individuals with chronic kidney disease? So that will be hyperkalemia because the body will not be able to get rid of potassium because of that problem. Question number three, what electrolyte imbalance is associated prolonged vomiting or gastric suctioning? When you're vomiting, you're losing a lot of HCL. So you know that what will be affected be chloride. So you have hypochloremia. Question number four, the normal range for serum potassium levels in adults typically is 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents per liter. Or oh, that people say millimeters per Okay, so question five, which electrolyte imbalance can lead to increased neuromuscular excitability and muscle cramps and spasms? We've done something similar in the other video. If you do remember, you will know it is hypocalcemia. Question number six, what electrolyte imbalance is often seen in individuals with malabsorption disorders or chronic alcoholism? We have hyponatremia, hypernatremia, hypomagnesemia, hypermagnesemia. Go so with hypomagnesemia. Question number seven. What condition occurs when there is an excess of acid in body weight? So you are going to have an excess of acid. So that means you are going to have acidosis, all right? Then an excess of bicarbonate, you will have alkalosis. So the answer to this is acidosis. Question number eight. Respiratory alkalosis is characterized by an increased pH, okay, and a decreased PCO2 because respiratory alkalosis is caused by hyperventilation, all right? Question number nine, which of the following conditions can lead to hypokalemic acidosis? Usually, acidosis should be followed by hyperkalemia, but in this case, you have an acidosis that is characterized with hypokalemia. So the condition that can lead to this is diarrhea. All right, question number 10. Which of the following conditions can lead to hypochloremic alkalosis? All right. In vomiting, you lose a lot of acids as well as chloride. So you would have alkalosis and you will have low chloride levels. So excessive vomiting is your answer. Question number 11. In respiratory acidosis, the body retains too much carbon dioxide, oxygen, hydrogen ions, bicarbonate ions. Your answer will be carbon dioxide because in respiratory acidosis, it's caused by situations that do not allow a person to ventilate. So have accumulation of carbon dioxide and accumulation of hydrogen ions, the accumulation of acids. All right. So question number 12, what condition or which condition is characterized by a decreased blood pH and an excess of carbon dioxide in blood? So excess of carbon dioxide in blood, decreased pH of an acidosis and of the respiratory um respiratory genesis let's put it that way for want of a better word 
So question number 13, origin, that's what I wanted to say, okay. So question number 13, what is the primary compensatory mechanism for metabolic acidosis? All right, that will be hyperventilation. If you do have metabolic acidosis, your primary compensatory mechanism will be have to be a respiratory way. So in this case, you're trying to get rid of acid, so you're going to have hyperventilation, all right? Chronic kidney disease can lead to which type of acid-base imbalance? It's a metabolic disease, so you are going to have metabolic acidosis. Question number 15, which of the following conditions can lead to respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis occurs when you hyperventilate, when you shout too much, you're in hysteric, any condition that makes you to hyperventilate, all right? So that would anxiety or panic attacks, which are usually accompanied by hysteria, shouting, screaming, hyperventilation, all right? Question number 16, which electrolyte imbalance is commonly associated with metabolic acidosis. You have hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia. I've explained this before. So our answer will be hyperkalemia, except for the acidosis that comes with diarrhea. That particular acidosis is hypokalemic acidosis. All right, question number 17. In metabolic alkalosis, there's an excess of bicarbonate ions. All right? So question number 18. Which of the following conditions can lead to metabolic alkalosis? Metabolic alkalosis, you're losing hydrogen ions or you're gaining bicarbonate. So let's look. Diarrhea, you're losing Carbonate. Nope. Renal failure can't even get rid of acids. Excessive antacid consumption. Yeah, you're actually either gaining bicarbonate or taking uh, substances that can generate uh, bicarbonate, then hyperventilation. No. So our answer will be antacid consumption. Question number 19 Which condition is characterized by increased blood pH? All right, that's alkalosis and decreased PCO2 due to hyperventilation. All right, respiratory alkalosis is the answer. Question number 20, what is the primary compensatory mechanism for respiratory acidosis? I'll leave you to this. I told you if it's a respiratory origin, the primary compensatory mechanism will have to be metabolic one and vice versa. So in this case, you are going to have increased urinary excretion of hydrogen ions and resorption of bicarbonate by the kidneys, all right? So, question 21, which of the following conditions can lead to respiratory acidosis, respiratory acidosis, hyperventilation, no, that leads to respiratory alkalosis, hyperventilation, yeah. Excessive vomiting, no, that is a metabolic issue, diarrhea is only, also metabolic, so take hyperventilation, any condition that does not allow one to breathe well lead to hyperventilation, which will also lead to respiratory acidosis. Such conditions in COPD include uh, strangulation, they include asthma attacks, they include um, pulmonary, what's the name they call it, comes with coughing and all that does not allow people to breathe. So those are the kind of conditions you have. Then you have question number 22. What is the normal pH of arterial blood in humans? You shouldn't miss this. It's If you're talking about it as a range, it's 3.5 to 5. Uh, it's 7.35. Sorry, 7.35 to 7.45. And if you're talking about it as an average, it's 7.4. Okay. So question number 23, which of the following is considered a buffer system in the human body? The only one I see there is the bicarbonate, bicarbonic acid buffer system. Question number 24, which of the following organs primarily regulates bicarbonate levels in the body? It's usually the kidneys. 
Question number 25. The primary function of carbonic anhydrase in acid-base balance is to convert carbon dioxide to hydrogen? No. Bicarbonate to hydrogen? No. Car carbon dioxide to oxygen? No. It's in the conversion of carbon dioxide to carbonic acid and bicarbonate ions, and it's also a reversible reaction, all right? So that will be the answer. Which of the following conditions is characterized by a high anion gap metabolic acidosis? I would go with diabetic ketoacidosis because diabetic ketoacidosis, not only do you have acidosis uh, due to the condition you see, but you have ketone bodies which are acidic in nature, ketone bodies like your acetoacetic acid, tetrahydrosyteric acid, all those are acidic in nature, so give rise to this um, high, ion, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So question number 27, what acid-based imbalance is commonly seen in patients with chronic obstructive urinary disease? Those people cannot breathe, also you know that it will be of a respiratory origin and it has to do with respiratory acidosis. Anything that does not allow you to breathe well cause respiratory acidosis, all right? So question number 28, before we continue, please check. Have you liked? If you haven't, please go and press that like button. Have you shared? If you haven't, please share it on your WhatsApp status. Have you commented? If you haven't, just give me a nice comment. If you don't have time, give me a smiley emoji. And if you have not even subscribe, please do subscribe. Thank you very much. So question number 28. The body's immediate response to metabolic acidosis is often A, decreased respiratory rate, B, increased respiratory rate, C, increased urinary excretion of bicarbonate, D, decreased urinary excretion of bicarbonate. All right, so that's our answer. Question number 29. Which acid-base disorder results from overuse of salicylic acid? All right, you have A, metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis. C, metabolic alkalosis. D, respiratory alkalosis. I would go with metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Why? First of all, if you take an overdose of salicylic acid, that's like a spring. It's acidic in nature, so you're going to have metabolic acidosis because you, uh, it's going to mop up a lot of the bicarbonate, you know. And then, funny enough, the salicylic acid also has a way of stimulating the respiratory center to hyperventilate. So you do have a mixed picture of acid-based disorder. It's not pure metabolic or respiratory disorder, but it's a mixed disorder, so you will have metabolic acidosis as well as respiratory alkalosis. In the assignment, you should be able to know that. So question number 30, which of the following is a sign of respiratory acidosis? A, hyperventilation, B, hypertension, C, bradycardia, and D, hypercapnia. Hypercapnia means um, having high levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. That is a sign of respiratory acidosis. So that is the answer, hyper. Thank you very much for staying with me to the end of this uh, practice session. I hope I'll see you one more time for the last lap of this. Thank you very much. And God bless you.